Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In a previous video, we measured temperature with the Arduino Uno by using this analog device's TMP36. It's an analog device and it produces an output voltage that's proportional to the temperature that it's measuring or it's uh, the surrounding temperature. And we just fed that output voltage directly into one of the Arduino Uno uh, analog inputs along here, A0 through, what's it, A5. And I've got the graph here showing the output voltage with respect to the temperature for that device. You can see here it's a linear output voltage as the temperature increases. This is the output voltage here. So this TMP36 produces an output voltage. It doesn't produce a temperature. So then you have to interpret that output voltage. So that output voltage gets fed into the analog input or one of the analog inputs on the Arduino. And that gets read by the analog to digital converter that's on the Atmega chip. So the resolution of that ADC is 1024. So you take that uh, voltage from the temperature sensor, you divide it by 1024, and then we multiply it by 5 to get uh, 1024 separate voltage increments. And then we convert that to Celsius, and there's some offset, so we had to subtract uh, 0.5, and then we multiply it by 100 to convert that into uh, degrees Celsius. But then again, you know, it's, it's an analog output voltage that's proportional to temperature. Well, we're going to measure temperature a little differently this time, and we have two major differences, actually. We're going to measure uh, temperature digitally. This looks like an analog device, but this is actually a digital temperature sensor. And this measures uh, degrees Celsius. So this puts out an actual measurement in Celsius uh, in digital format. So it's an 8-bit word or one byte. And there's no conversion. It puts out a digital representation of Celsius. And the second difference is we're going to use uh, a communications protocol, a digital communications protocol called I2C. And it's a two-wire protocol. So we have two wires connected to A4 and A5. So let's take a quick look at the data sheet for this digital temperature sensor. And here it is, it's a TC74, and it's a digital temperature sensor, and the one that we have is actually in what they call a TO220 package, so it looks like a MOSFET or an amplifier. And the TC74 is a serial, serially accessible digital temperature sensor particularly suited for low-cost and small form factor applications. And I think it has, uh, let's see, the accuracy is plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius from 25 degrees C to plus 85 degrees C and plus or minus 3 degrees Celsius accuracy from 0 degrees C to 125 degrees C. So again, this is an I2C device and it only requires two wires to communicate with it. There's a serial data and a serial clock line. So let's take a look at how I2C communications work. So again, it's a two-wire uh, communication scheme. And what you have is you have a master device. And this controls or initiates the communication between your slave devices, in this instance, the temperature sensor. So this is the Arduino Uno, the master device, and we have serial data and serial clock. And this is a bi-directional, two-direction communications line, so communication can go back and forth from the master to the slave and from the slave to the master. It does require these two resistors called pull-up resistors, 
And that's so the serial data and the serial clock are not at just some random arbitrary voltage level. This guarantees that they're going to be pulled up to five volts uh, until they receive a signal and then we can uh, pull it down to zero volts. But this stabilizes these two communication lines. So we can see from the data sheet, the one I'm actually using is this TC74A0-5. So this is a 5 volt version. Uh, they have 3.3 volt versions too. Uh, and the address for this is 72. So in order to talk to this temp digital temperature sensor, you have to address uh, the 72 here. You have to be pointing at address 72. Analog Devices actually makes an AD7414 and 7415 and they have an address select pin. Address select. And what you do with that is depending on whether that depending on whether that pin is tied to ground plus 5 volts or floating, you can select three different addresses. So let's take a look at a flow chart of how we go about uh, communicating using the I2C protocol. So to give you a general idea of how you talk to an I2C capable device. So to initiate communications you send a start bit and that says you want to start communicating with uh, your slave. And then you send the address of that slave so you specify which one you're talking to and you send another bit that says uh, you're going to read or write from that slave device. The slave device then sends you a bit, a uh, zero bit, and acknowledges the communication. It says, okay, I'm ready. And if it's acknowledged, you can either write or you can read from that device. And if you're reading, you're going to read a byte of information and if you're sending a byte of information from the master to the slave, you're going to send a byte. And we come down here to a decision. Are we going to do any additional communication? Uh, we say yes, so we come back up and we go back up to just before acknowledge. And then uh, it sends out another acknowledge saying it's ready to either uh, read data into the slave or write data from the slave to the master. Uh, if we have a no or no further communication is needed, we come down here and we end with a stop, a send stop. So there's a stop bit that ends communication. So to summarize it in writing, uh, the first step is for the masters to send a start bit saying it wants to communicate with the slave. And then the master has, has to send a 7-bit slave address. So in the I2C protocol, uh, the, the slave addresses are 7 bits. And then the master sends a read 1-bit if it wants to read, or it sends a write 0-bit if it wants to write to the slave. The slave responds with an acknowledge or ACK bit a logic low. If we're writing to the slave, the master sends one, one byte of information at a time and the slave responds with an ACK or acknowledge after each byte of information. And then in the read mode, if the master is receiving a byte of information uh, from the slave, it will send an acknowledge to the slave saying it has received that information. And then when communication is complete, the master stops or sends a, a stop bit. Now, one other feature uh, of this temperature, digital temperature sensor, it has two registers. So you have to point to, uh, so it not only has an address, but it has uh, two different registers. So one register has the current temperature stored in it in uh, degrees Celsius. The second register has like configuration. There's a feature uh, of this digital temperature sensor. You can put it into standby, which is a lower uh, power using mode. We're not going to be using that. We're only going, going to be reading 
from uh, the register that contains the temperature information. And that's summarized here. The TC-74 is two registers. One stores current temperature in Celsius as a byte of information. The other register contains configuration information such as standby and data ready state. So let me hook up the Arduino and we can measure, we can monitor the temperature with the serial monitor program. So let me open up the monitor program and we can see the temperatures. And there's the degree Celsius and also in the sketch there's a formula for converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. That's why it's printing out Fahrenheit also. So let's review the sketch. So Wire.h is the I2C Arduino library and so we have to include that library in this sketch. Wire.h and if you recall what that does also is pins A4 and A5 here. They're multiplexed pins. They can either be analog inputs or they are the uh, serial data or the serial clock pins on the I2C. And what happens is when you include this library in your sketch, uh, these no longer are used as analog inputs. They can't be used as analog inputs anymore. They are dedicated to the serial data and the serial clock pins, A4 and A5. So you can see here we've uh, included the wire.h and the address for the temperature, the digital temperature sensor is 72. And here's the digital, here's the binary version of 72. So we assign 72 to this integer variable temp address. And then we initiate the serial port communication. We have serial.begin at 9600 baud. And then we create the wire object. So we have wire.begin. Now remember we have to request, or we have to send a start bit to start transmitting or communicating with the slave. So when we include the wire.h library, the functions available uh, for the I2C communication uh, are available. So here we have a wire.begin transmission. And this is saying that we want to start talking to the slave that's at address 72, or the 72 that's been uh, assigned to temp address. Next thing is, is that we want to send a bit asking to look at register zero. Remember there are two registers on this temperature sensor and register zero is where the temperature information is stored. So we have to send a bit asking for register zero, the data register. So we have to uh, wire dot write. We have to write a zero to the slave. So now we're pointing at uh, address or register zero. And then we end communication at that point. We wire dot end transmission because we're now looking at that register. So now that we're looking at the register, we want to read information from that slave to the Arduino. So here we uh, request one byte of information from the specified address. So here's a wire dot request from function. And there's two arguments, of course, the address of the slave, and we're requesting one byte of information. There's also a function called wire.available, and that is uh, setting up the slave. <clears throat> we're waiting for the information to receive, uh, for the microcontroller to receive the information from the slave uh, before we continue with the rest of the program. So while wire.available is zero, uh, we're going to take, read that information because it takes time uh, to go 
to the Arduino and we're going to use a wire dot read and read the information into integer variable C. And then the next thing is the only thing we have to do now is if we wanted uh, the Celsius converted to Fahrenheit, we have a little formula here. I don't know if you recall from uh, school or high school that uh, Celsius goes from 0 to 100 and Fahrenheit goes from 32 to 212. So Fahrenheit, there's actually more degrees uh, than Celsius degrees. They're uh, by nine-fifths. So you have to multiply the Celsius by nine-fifths, and then you have to add 32 to convert to Fahrenheit. And the rest we just print out uh, the Celsius and print out a letter indicating the units in Celsius, and we print out Fahrenheit, and the unit, uh, we'll just print out the letter F to, in, to indicate the unit in Fahrenheit. So if we didn't want the Fahrenheit measurement, we already have the Celsius because the digital output is a direct measurement of Celsius on the digital temperature sensor. There's no converting or interpretation needed. So currently I just have this one temperature sensor with the one address. I've ordered a couple of the same temperature sensors with different addresses because I want to add multiple slaves and uh, acquire temperature readings from each one individually. Um, so I'll probably do a video on that. But if you found this video interesting, please like, subscribe, and or comment. And thanks for watching.